Hey folks, y'all hear that? You better put on your snake boots before you come into camp for this episode. Come on, cause it's gonna be good. You're gonna wanna see this one. Show, I mean, like, where's the snake? He was on the porch a while ago. Well, we're going down there to my son's house. His grandson lived, my grandson lived not too far from him. And he knew that I'd been wanting a snake. They say this is a big one, so with some luck, hey, we might have some fried snake for breakfast. It's 8.30 at night. Them snakes, you know, it's cooling off that time of year, and them snakes is coming back looking for some warm concrete to lay on, so. We got him hemmed up. Oh, they do? Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh dang! How far will that thing like strike? How close do you want to get? No, I don't want to get that close. You can get. You can get right Two up here by the body. hole. Hang on, yeah, there. Rare up a little bit. Ooh, ooh, he's mad. Did you get there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we call that in the butt. Pretty healthy, but it takes a lot of snake to have some meat, as y'all seen it after we clean it here in a minute, because all you're getting is that loin right down the back, and uh, you'll be good eating. Caught me off guard a little bit, they did tonight. You can see the stripes on him. We call him a coontail rattler, but he's also a diamond back, too. You can see that. And, uh, I got a friend wanting the skin. He gonna make him a hat band out of it. So we'll save that too. And snakes are really easy to clean. It's sort of like, hey, pulling off a pair of socks. You just get her done. And you just start right there in the, in the middle of his underneath side and just split it all the way up here to the front. Everybody has to excuse my lighting. Yeah, cause it's dark. And then we're just gonna go to pulling it off of him. It's good to go. But you can see the reflexes are in him that he's still going around and see where that head is still trying to come back around there and bite. So what do you? Well, you just take it at one end and it's just like you cleaning a deer and everything out. out and it all comes with it. You just gotta be careful that you get it all and don't bust nothing you ain't supposed to. What are you gonna bust? Well, there's all kinds of little organs in there you don't wanna disrupt and get on the taste of the meat. We're gonna let him soak overnight. I'll see y'all in camp in the morning. I hope you're hungry. Whew, good to be back in camp it is. It was a long night after skinning that snake and trying to get everything just right so we could cook it for y'all. But you don't wanna miss out on none of this stuff. So make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the dingy dong bill. And you won't never miss out. Dingy dong bell. Yeah, dingy dong bell. That's what is I that said. Okie for... Yeah, that's okie for I dingy dong bell. bill. Just ring the dingy dong bell, Shan said, okay? Products we use and the printable recipe will be right down below. Rattlesnake, whoo. I've had them crawl into camp. I've nearly stepped on them in camp. I've been bit in the heel of a boot when I was a young child picking plums in a plum thicket. Scared me to death. I don't hunt snake, but if I have one come into camp where I think I'm fitting to get bit, I'm thinking, hmm, or dervies. That's what we're gonna have right before them cowboys come in because Ain't no sense in wasting something. The skin become the hat band, the meat become whew, fine dining it did. And when you're eating snake, folks, I just wanna tell you right now, don't be think you can be getting one of them like this, ain't no meat on them. Now, I do want you to know right from the start, don't do this at home. If you've had no experience in this as a snake wrangler, don't just go outside and say, hey, I'm gonna pick that snake up. That snake will bite you, folks. Get you some of them blue gloves. Let me see what happens here. I think, you know which kind you I'm talking them? about? Let, let me look in here. Folks, you don't get you some of them or whatever color you think goes with your apparel that you're wearing. See, it matches my outfit today, it does. Because to me, snake meat, and when you're skinning a snake, that old skin and stuff and the fat that is on one, has a little odor to it. But you gotta make sure, just like any wild game that you're fixing, it is washed many times and rinsed, cleaned really well, and then let's get it to where we need it to be after that. For snake, or even old wild hog, I always like to soak in buttermilk overnight. Now, the reason I like to use buttermilk is I think there's a little acid in there that helps sort of break that stuff down, but also it's gonna give it a more tender flavor, a more southern rich flavor to me, 
let that thing set at least six hours. I like to go overnight. Now you see me in this little deal we had last night, add a little water to that buttermilk because I want to make sure he's covered really well. But if you got enough buttermilk, just use plain buttermilk all the way through. So we're going to start with a cup of all-purpose flour. A half a cup of cornmeal because I like to have a little bit of that crunchiness you get out there. You know, like when you're frying fish. Then we're going to go a tablespoon of what? Red River Ranch Mesquite. You ain't got none? Channel have you a link up there where you can get it because this stuff got a little ancho chili in there, but a good mesquite flavoring. Cayenne pepper. Ooh. I like my snake to bite, but I like him to bite in a good way after I done got him cooked up a notch. So we're just going to put just a tad because it don't take much of this. So we're going to put it right there. Onion powder. Teaspoonful. Look who showed up. And look who come in. The taste testers. And we're going to go about two teaspoons of garlic powder, which is that much. Now to that, y'all have seen me drag it out many times when we're frying. What is it? Corn starch. It's not only for first aid and medical ingredients of thickening gravy. It is good to help batter adhere to meat and make it puff there and have a good crust. So we're going to go with two tablespoons. That completes the dry section of this movie. So let's get her mixed up really well. Now we may have to add a little to this if the snake is bigger than what we got for, because you can't just go to the towns to the butcher man and say, I'd like a four pound snake, please. <laughs> Cause I don't think he's gonna have him. So we're gonna have a little dry. We gotta have a little wet. What do we call them? Cackle berries. That is what they are called. And we've taken two of them, a cup of milk which is that much right there. Pardon me while I put this back in the refrigerator. Get you a whisk. Time to drag out the main feature of this attraction and that is the snake. There he is folks. He has been bathing in the buttermilk all night. Well, let's just start by cleaning up these little edges here. And you got to cut through that backbone just like that. So make sure you just clean them up. I want to square them off here a little. Now we're just going to cut him into about four inch pieces. Something that'll fry up really well. You know, this old fella here, he's pretty stout. That backbone is thicker than mine. Let's go ahead and put these in the milk and egg mixture. And you can use buttermilk if you've seen fit. But folks, he done had a buttermilk bath. So I'm just giving him a milk and egg bath. Then we're going to take him right over here. Make sure he gets some of that all the way through because I want that good crust on there. And what are we going to do? You guessed it. We're going to double baptize we are. Then we're just going to set them right over here on this plate till we get the rest of them done and the oil gets hot. Then we're going to fry up some crispy goodness. People have been eating snake for a long, long time, folks. They have. And I am sure old Cookie going down the trail, he found many of them crawling there in an old wagon tracker on a trail. Hey, that's meat. Let's throw it in the pot. A lot of them even made like a rattlesnake stew. You just cook that stuff down a little bit in a skillet, add you some peppers, onions, everything that go with it, throw it back in there, rattlesnake chili. Hey, them old cookies used it a whole lot. I fixed it on ranches for cowboys as hors d'oeuvres on hors d'oeuvre night, fried in some good peanut oils. What we're using today, we're about two inches deep in that old fine neck skillet. I've heated it to about 355 degrees we have. It is time to fry some snake. Lay them in there gingerly, and I don't like to crowd them up now. We're just going to do three pieces at a time. That way you get more of an even cook. And I want you to make sure that the pieces that you're putting in there are sort of the same size. Just as everything tapers off in life, though, so does a snake's body. So long to short, thicker to thin, make sure they sort of match when you put them in here. You can see them little fellers have done floated back up there at the top. I like to roll them over, even though they're already submerged in grease. And that snake don't want to lay on his belly. They never have. And that reminds me of an old wives tale that I heard many years ago. You got that snake, throw him out there on the ground or hang him on a fence. If he rolls over belly side up, it's going to rain that night. Really golden, crispy brown, and we are nearly there. How long do they fry? 
don't take long folks because you got to remember that low end run down that little snake's back ain't very big and the rest of it is just rib meat very thin so it don't take long to cook a snake That's what I call a good crust. I want you to listen to him. That's like a shell on a turtle's back. That stuff will repel water if you set it out there, I promise, and that's what we're after. I'm not gonna take a bite of this one just yet. I'm just gonna show you about what we're talking about on this low end. So let me just crack that shell on there, and we're gonna look here and see. There ain't a whole lot there. This is about what you're getting, folks. You get right again that low end, and you can pick on them bones and clean it off. But if you're feeding a lot of people, I'm just going to tell you right now, you better start snake hunting last year because it's going to take a bunch. So let me just go ahead and have me a little old bite of this. Kent, mm. does it taste like chicken? <laughs> no. Got more of a chewy texture than anything like a fish or a chicken would have. Now there is a distinct taste to that to me, and it it's not what I'd call gamey, but just sort of like a, a mild white fish. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this sauce on it. Now, I like two different kinds. This is a smoky sauce that's got a little honey, and do you know Duke has his own mayonnaise company, Duke the Dog, Duke's Mayonnaise. So I'm gonna put a little right down here. And a lot of y'all turned us on to that Duke's mayonnaise, and let me tell you, that stuff is some fine dinning. Dinning? Fine dining. Another great method that I like to use to dip my snake in, what is it? Kent Rollins green chili chipotle relish. Give that snake a bite the second time. You need a snake charmer dance. Mm. No, it's called a snake stomping dance. <clears throat> if he's a big snake, Whoa. you get plumb up here on top of the table. Woo. Crocodile Dundee ain't got nothing on me, folks. Snake will make you athletic. You ever been walking through the pasture and you see one? You can jump twice as far as you ever thought you could. I'm just telling you. Now, down below, we'll have you some resources of where you can find you some snake if you need some. Because I am not recommending you going out into the wilderness and trying to catch your own if you don't know what's going on. I don't want to hear about you getting snake bit. I tip my hat to our servicemen and women and all the veterans who keep that flag flying over camp. We shall not forget you ever, and we keep you in our thoughts and prayers. We would also like to tell you all, be sure you like, you share, and you subscribe, because we don't want you to miss out. Now, I need a favor from you. Get you some food. Ring the bell across there. Take it to your neighbor. Take it to someone who might need a meal, who you just want to share and visit with, and then tell them. You want to eat again at my house, you better subscribe to them Cowboy Kent Rollins videos. So we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. God bless you, each and every one. And I'll see you down the fried rattlesnake trail. Let's try some snake. Big says it'll work. Dookie, you like snake? Yeah, I think you could be part snake dog, I do. We have a very special shout out this week and that is to Shelby and the James Gang. They might have been part of that outlaw bunch, I don't know, but we appreciate y'all watching, we really do.